So let us begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. O Lord, open our lips. And our shall proclaim your praise. Let everything that has breath praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Alleluia. Well, I formally welcome you, and I've done all the notices, so I'm not going to go through those. So without further ado, let us stand to sing our first hymn, Mary's Great Song. The Magnificat, tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord. together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving to hear and receive God's holy word to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God the night has passed and the day lies open before us as we sit or stand let us pray Gracious God, we thank you for bringing us, bringing us to the beginning of this new day. Help us to be aware of your presence, to commit to serve you, and to sing your praise now and ever, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We come now to our prayers of penitence. Jesus said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We pray together. Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like the morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy upon us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the prayer for today, let us pray. God of mercy and compassion, look on this wounded world in pity and in power and help us to hold fast to your promises of peace 
won for us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you wish to, please be seated for our first reading. A reading from Psalm 107. I give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on the mighty waters. They saw the deeds of the Lord, his wondrous works in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to heaven, they went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their calamity. They reeled and staggered like drunkards, and were at their wit's end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad because they had quiet, and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. Let them extol him in the congregation of the people, and praise him in the assembly of the elders. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you wish to, please stand as we sing our second hymn, Lead Us, Heavenly Father, Lead Us. Our second reading comes from Mark's Gospel, chapter 4. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great gale arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this? But even the wind and the sea obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And we sing our third hymn, O Sing a Song of Bethlehem.
and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Do please be seated. Well, I said last week about this reading that, um, not having been to the Holy Land, um, the geography of the Sea of Galilee is unknown to me, except through pictures, but it's surrounded by hills on every side, except for the valley end, where the water comes in, obviously, which is a perfect funnel for strong winds that come. And in, you get these sudden storms and squalls on the lake. And we get such a storm, a particularly violent one, in our story, the Gospel today. You can see also how the psalm, the, the powerful psalm of the description of a storm and the fear of the sailors has, if you like, fed into the Gospel story itself. And this is a story of fear and faith. <clears throat> it says elsewhere in the New Testament, in the, in the letter to the Hebrews, faith is defined as the confident assurance of the things we hope for, the inner conviction about things that are invisible. The confident assurance of the things we hope for, the inner conviction about things that are invisible. Faith cannot be seen, it can only be experienced. Jesus has, a long, has had a long day of teaching and preaching and uh, wishes to get away from where they've been. Let us go to the other side, he says. And um, Some of the disciples, certainly those who've been like Peter and Andrew, James and John, sailors, uh, fishermen on the, the large inland lake that's Galilee, would have been very familiar with this journey. But it was different today and this was some storm to frighten them so much. And when they wake Jesus, it's interesting to know what they say and what they don't say. They don't cry, help us, or do something, perform some great miracle. They just say, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Teacher, do you not care? Jesus' is apparent indifference, managing to sleep on during a violent storm, he must have been very tired, his lack of seeming lack of care is what concerns them more. Maybe they wanted to wake him up and help them bail out the boat, but it's more that. Do you not care? And throughout this long 15 months, which has seen longer, that question may have been in many people's minds and hearts and even on their lips. Lord, do you not care? Well, I wouldn't be standing here if I didn't believe God does care and that care has been manifest in many ways not least in the care that people have received through our health services however well or poorly led they have been the care that's been in the success of the vaccination program the care that many of you have shown to your neighbours and friends and to members of this congregation. 
that care is there. We have ourselves often felt at times overwhelmed, deluged if you like, by this terrible virus. And there is still plenty of fear about. And that's understandable. But at the same time it's lovely and heartwarming to see people who've not managed to get to church and haven't felt it's been quite safe enough for them and that's perfectly understandable. It's been lovely to see people coming back over these last few weeks. Jesus still invites us to go across to the other side with him. And in doing so, we may encounter storms on the way. It won't be easy because we step out in faith, faith that cannot be seen, only experienced. But the deep reassuring peace of Christ is still here to be found if we call on him with all our heart and soul. Despite all evidence to the contrary, he is there just as he was in that boat. Just as he's there in the healing hands and sacrificial actions of many in our NHS and care services, in neighbours, in our fellow church members, in our friends and family. So let us take the step of faith and go across to the other side. The other side of this pandemic which we will get through eventually. The other side of our fear. For in Christ God is with us through the storm and in the storm. And God's will is always health and wholeness. Amen. If you wish, please stand as we affirm our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We say together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And if you wish, please remain standing as we sing our next hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind.
you can and wish, please be seated for our prayers. Let us pray. To you, O Lord, my heart shall sing without ceasing. Loving Lord, give us the courage to serve and share in the love you have for all people, particularly within this community. We pray for the church in this culturally and economically diverse diocese. Enable us by your spirit to face the challenges society presents us at this time. We ask your blessing on all who are being ordained this Petertide as priests and deacons within your church. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord of land and sea, we thank you for the countryside for the flowers, trees and crops, as well as the rolling hills and winding streams. Whether we live in town or country, help us to appreciate the variety of our world. Bring us a glimpse of heaven in hedgerow and copse, a scent of eternity in honeysuckle and lavender. Lord, in your mercy. Yes, yeah. Lord of mind and spirit, give us a true appreciation of celestial sounds in music, in voice, in words and prayer. May the gift of silence crowd out the sound of noise. And may we value balance in all things, rhythm in most things, harmony as well as melody. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Our prayer. Loving Lord, we bring before you the sick and suffering of our world. For those who died in the Miami apartment block and those still missing. For the dead, injured and homeless from the Czech tornado. We pray for all those afflicted in body wrapped by physical pain, wrestling with disease, or coming to terms with terminal illness. We pray for those disturbed or troubled in mind, those whose confidence has been crushed, no longer able to cope with the pressures of daily life and facing the dark despair of depression. We pray for those afflicted in spirit, all who feel their lives to be empty, or whose beliefs are threatened, or who have lost their faith. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Loving God, reach out through all who work to bring wholeness and healing. Grant them wisdom and guidance, strength and support, and the ability to minister something of your care and compassion for all. We pray at this time for Pauline Birch, David Clapson, Yvonne Driffield, Amanda Garner, Bryn Gaden, Roger Green, India Tuck, and Trisha Wimble. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Loving Lord, in your Son Jesus Christ, we receive everlasting life. In this hope we commend to you all the departed, especially Shirley Hum, David Felsted, Nigel Parr, Timothy Pearson, and Peter Clover, remembering his widow Margaret at this time. We remember also the souls of Florence Lester, Dorothy Gardner and Violet Nielsen, whose years mind occur at this time. Bring us at the last to rejoice with you. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Gracious God, help us to know that the one who calmed the waves on the Sea of Galilee is present with us day by day. 
and that he cares for us and can calm the waves of our lives. Help us to trust more fully and more deeply in you, in all that we are involved with in the days to come. And I'd just like to conclude something of a more positive note of this pandemic, which was written by a journalist, a friend of Sarah Sands, who used to produce the Today programme. I'm in the country, have been here for weeks, because I was spooked early by COVID. I write all day, garden and walk. Never see anyone. But the countryside is extraordinary. No traffic, no machines, no jet trails and no boats. I went to cut hazel bean sticks and it struck me that for the first time we are hearing the countryside as Wordsworth did. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Just before the blessing, I'd like to thank um, particularly Simon, the church warden, and Anne, our church warden too, and Caroline for uh, enabling this service to take place in the way it has. Um, it's really good to see you all here. Next week we'll be back indoors, no doubt it'll be a blazingly hot day or something. Um, but uh, we will be going out at the end of the family service just to say that next Sunday is our first Sunday of the month, so there'll be a prayer book communion at 8 o'clock and then the family service at 11. And at the end of the family service, Trevor will come out with his guitar and I will and we'll sing together here outside the last song of the family service outside as we have been doing since we restarted them back in May. So let us bow our heads for God's blessing and asking him for the peace of which Jesus spoke. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Again, please stand if you wish as we sing our final hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer.
further has held. And so it has, as I said, it's been very good to see you here outside today and to hear people singing. Alleluia. And we will do it again. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.